This is your laboratory orientation on endocrine histology. The slides that you will be studying today include pituitary gland, thyroid, parathyroid, adrenal gland, and pancreas. Let us start with the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is divided into two parts, anterior pituitary and posterior pituitary. Aside from having distinct histologic characteristics, the two parts have different embryonic origins. The anterior pituitary gland originates from the Rotke's pouch, while the posterior pituitary gland develops from the downward growth of the diencephalon. Let us now focus on the portion of the anterior pituitary gland that is in intimate contact with the posterior pituitary. This is called the pars intermedia. At high magnification, we can see that this part of the anterior pituitary gland is characterized by the presence of colloidal structures. These colloidal structures are called Rocky's cyst. The pars intermedia secretes the melanocyte stimulating hormone. Now, let's move to the part of the anterior pituitary gland called the pars distalis. At high magnification, three types of cells are visible. The first is the acetophil, as shown by the red arrow. The acetophils appear as cells with pink cytoplasm and dark nuclei. These cells secrete growth hormone and prolactin. Shown by the blue arrow is the cell known as basophil. In contrast to the acetophil, basophils appear as darker cells with purple cytoplasm. They secrete TSH, ACTH, FSH, and LH. Shown by the green arrow are the chromophobes. They are paler compared to both acetophil and basophil. They are cells that have degranulated their contents. Now let's focus on the posterior pituitary, or the pars nervosa. The posterior pituitary resembles unmyelinated nervous tissue. It is composed of the nerve cell terminals that run down from neurons whose cell bodies are located in the hypothalamus. Shown by the red arrow is the herring body. They are distensions of the axon terminal fibers where neurosecretory granules have accumulated. The nuclei visible in this slide, as shown by the blue arrow, belong to supporting cells known as pituocytes. The thyroid has a characteristic appearance under each and each stain. Most noticeable are the thyroid follicles, shown by the two arrows. They are composed of cuboidal epithelial cells called principal cells. These cells surrounding a lumen filled with colloid. Colloid consists primarily of thyroglobulin. Also visible in this slide are a few C-cells, or parafollicular cells, scattered in the spaces between follicles. C-cells secrete calcitonin. Under the scanner view, we can see the parathyroid embedded in the thyroid gland.
It is separated from the thyroid gland by a connective tissue capsule. Let's now focus using HPO. Under HPO, we can see two types of cells. The more numerous are PTH producing chief cells, as shown by the red arrow. They are characterized by pale cytoplasm and central nuclei. On the other hand, the much lighter cells are known as oxyphil cells, as shown by blue arrow. Their function is unknown. The islets of Langerhans, as pointed by the two arrows, appear as distinct islands in a sea of pancreatic acinar cells. They constitute just a small percentage, 2% of pancreatic tissue. The islets can be identified because of their distinct geometric cord pattern and high vascularity when compared to the acini. Within the islet are alpha, beta, and D cells. Several blood vessels are also visible near the islets. At scanner view, we can see that the adrenal gland has two distinct parts, the cortex and the medulla, which differ in structure, function, and embryological origin. The adrenal cortex is organized into cords and are arranged radially around the medulla. Let's now focus on the cortex. The cortex is divided into three sublayers, namely zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculata, and zona reticularis. The zona glomerulosa is the thin outer layer of the adrenal cortex. Its cells are pale staining and organized into ovoid clusters. The cells of the zona glomerulosa produce mineral hormones like aldosterone. Just below this sublayer is the zona fasciculata. The zona fasciculata comprises the thick, middle layer of the cortex. Its cells are very pale because of the presence of lipid droplets. The cells of this region are organized into parallel cords. The cells of this region produce glucocorticoids like cortisol. The deepest sublayer of the cortex is the zona reticularis. The zona reticularis is the innermost layer of the adrenal cortex. Cells in the zona reticularis stain deeply. This region produces androgens. The adrenal medulla is the innermost portion of the gland. It shares an embryological origin with the sympathetic nervous system. Its cells possess abundant cytoplasmic granules that contain stored peptide hormones and catecholamines. These cells are frequently called chromaffin cells because they can be stained with chromium salts. This orientation was prepared by Dr. Dennis Ivan Bravo.